Okay, good morning, everyone. And um, I, as you know, um, you know, I love uh, making uh, the messages and sermons, um, you know, interactive. So I'm going to try and do that, um, you know, uh, do that over um, the, the online thing that we are doing. Okay, so I would like you to uh, be prepared, uh, just do a little bit of um, uh, collection of things. So I need a few things for you to collect. One is please get a piece of paper and uh, a pencil. I'm, I, I need you to note down something so that you know you can you can do this uh, uh, as as I as you know as we as we do this exercise. Um, and second is uh, if you have a secondary device in which you can log on to internet, please have it with you. I want to try and do some. Um, you know, internet-based poll, uh, which uh, will give us some idea about the thought process around us. So please, uh, if you can, if you can get it, uh, that would be great. Please, uh, please have a, a secondary device. If, if you're if you're on your phone, it could be your laptop. If you're on a laptop, it could be a smartphone. Primarily, have a secondary device where you can log in to the web. And when I have the poll, I would like all family members to give your input separately, not per login. I know that there are only about 14 logins into the uh, inside the um, you know in, in, in the in the Zoom, uh, but uh, the the poll is uh, obviously for all the members, you know, for, because each of the logins have got more than one member uh, logging in. So I would really like to you know uh, see uh, a lot more responses than the number of logins. Okay. Thirdly, please keep your Bible available uh, near you. I'm going to call upon a few people to read some verses so that you know, we can still make it a little bit more interactive and not a monologue. So let's try to simulate the live church environment as much as possible. So bear with me as we, as we do this. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to grab these things, a, a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen, uh, a secondary device in which you can log on to um, internet and your Bible, either a digital version or, um, you know, or, or the physical uh, version, the old style. So just, I'll give you 30 seconds to get uh, set. Okay, so I'm going to start by asking you to do a difficult thing. I'm going to ask you to, you know, choose. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, pictures uh, from, you know, our, our family album. And I'm going to choose, uh, ask you to choose your most favorite picture, okay? Um, and uh, by the way, I have, I have titled my message, Cancer, Corona and Christ, the three C's that are relevant today, the three C's, cancer, Corona, and the Christ. So we will, we will, we will, we will get into that topic uh, um, you know, soon, but for the time being, I want you to look at the, these two pictures that I'm going to show you, and then I will give you some instructions by which you can online, go online and choose uh, the your, your most favorite picture. And that's why I asked you to have uh, an internet uh, device available with you, okay? So take a look at this picture. Um, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the happy pictures that, uh, you know, that we have. Okay, see the bald, bald picture that we have? Yes, seen. Great, okay. 
So these are the two pictures that I want you to choose from. Okay, you don't have a choice. You've got to choose one of them. Okay, I know that you like us so much that you would prefer to probably, you know, want to want to uh, choose both, but uh, you can't do that. You will need to, you know, make sure that uh, that that you are choosing um, one of them. Okay, uh, you, you it is a forced choice. So here is what I want you to do. Just remember these two pictures, and don't worry even if you don't remember. It will be there in the website as I told you. The happy picture, which where Leslie looks a lot more beautiful than I do, and uh, the another happy picture where probably uh, you know I will leave that to you, the imagination. Who looks happier here? Who looks prettier here? Okay. Madam Madana, we didn't get to see the second picture. Okay, it's on the screen right now. Are you able to see now? No. The first one we saw. The second one we couldn't. Okay, now are you able to see it now? No. Really, I don't know if the others can. No, uh, can we can? I can. I can. All right. Even okay. I can. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We saw. All right. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you you got to choose between these two. Okay, as I said, I know you love us so much that you probably want to say that both look great, but that's not an answer that is acceptable this morning. Okay, you got to choose one of them. And the way to choose is very simple. Uh, you go to this uh, menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and enter this code, double nine five three zero eight. If you have a, a notepad, please note this down, double nine five three zero eight. The pictures will be there in the, in the, in the website also, so don't worry. Uh, you, got, you, got to, you got to enter, uh, go and enter there, and I say tools. I would like all family members to do that, uh, you know, um, uh, do that separately. Do not, do not, uh, you know, do not just uh, go only by, you know, um, do not, do not go only by one person. Okay, uh, you, I would like you to uh, all the family members to do that, uh, do that choice. Okay. All right, I'm already seeing some responses coming in, but we need more responses. I'm going to share the responses with you. All right, great. Six responses till now, seven, keep going, keep going. All right, <laughs> nine responses out of which eight people have liked my bald picture, my goodness. <laughs> All right, okay, 11 responses, excellent. A few more. I'll give another 30 seconds to see if, uh, wow, this is, this is phenomenal. Only one person has liked our anniversary picture. I thought that would be the, <laughs> that would be the, the favorite picture of ours, but yeah. All right, good. Okay, at least one more person have liked that, <laughs> the anniversary picture, good. Okay, that is 13 of you. All right, thank you for your responses and you know how, how uh, you know, the, the responses look like. Uh, there are some more people adding to that anniversary picture group. Uh, good to see, so it is now 11, 3 to 11, three, only three people liking the, the, the happy picture and almost 11 people liking another happy picture. Great, so in the interest of time, I will move on. Thank you for all those who participated. Uh, you know, this shows that uh, BBFE is technology savvy. I think, uh, you know, at least 14 of you could log in and, uh, and, and do the voting, electronic voting. So that's excellent, thank you. Give yourself a, a big hand, uh, you know, in, 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 in uh, probably crossing another barrier in technology when it comes to online, um, <laughs> online sharing. All right, so um, we are, you know, so I, I told you this is, these are two, two of our pictures and these are, you know, both uh, great pictures. Now, several of you know uh, Arvi, who is, uh, you know, who is the, who is our foster granddaughter, who is at our, at, you know, who, some of you have seen her in the, in the church. So here she is, right? Uh, for those of you who, are, who do not know her, her name is Arvi, and uh, she is our foster granddaughter. Now, 
what happens here is phenomenal. When, when you show her this picture, she is all lovey-dovey. She is smiling and she says we are Tata and Nanny, you know. But the moment we show her this picture, her expression changes. Her expression becomes angry. She says, these are not Nanny and Tata. This is some uncle and auntie whom I do not know, <laughs> right? So, so, so according to her, we cannot be like this. We cannot be, you know, this, 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 this way. We cannot be, we, we, we are not supposed to be like this, according to Arvi. She says, this is not, this is not my Tata and Nani, you know? While she says, this one is, this is what Tata and Nani are, but not this. She says, this is some other uncle and auntie whom I don't recognize, right? So that's the, that's the really the, 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 <laughs> the what, what she says. But anyway, I'm happy that you guys think differently. You have, you have, you have, uh, you know, recognized me. But I'm going to tell you the story behind this, and just because you voted for this picture, okay? I have a story behind the happy picture too. But I'm going to tell you the story behind the other, another happy picture. I'm going to tell you the story behind this picture. It was, um, you know, it was it was 29th of October 2014. That was when. Uh, you know, um, it is that that is when we, um, you know, when we when we um, both Leslie and I went through some several mixed reactions when the biopsy report uh, confirmed that Leslie had cancer. This was the day, 29th of October, 2014. Neville was not with us. Neville was in London doing his studies, and uh, our first reaction was, of course, to call him and uh, give him that uh, bad news for him to digest. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and then we got on to this frantic, um, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, activities of having to, uh, you know, planning several things, right? You, I, I, I'm sure uh, those of us who ever had somebody go through cancer know, we had to finalize the hospitals, we had to finalize the oncologists whom we will see, we had to finalize the treatment schedule, we had to make sure that the uh, insurance is notified and, and, you know, and, and, and more than all that, we also needed to strengthen ourselves, right? Strengthen ourselves to handle the emotional pressure that this put both of us in. And remember the date, it was on 29th of October, 2014. To add to that emotional pressure, what was also the problem is that uh, you know that that um, uh, the the uh, you know I was I was scheduled to travel to Chennai to be the resource person for a three-day retreat on of the Methodist Youth Fellowship for Indiranagar Methodist Church, Bangalore, and I was supposed to start the journey the ne very next day. 29th, we get the news, and on 30th evening, I'm supposed to board the train to go to Chennai so that I could be the resource person for this, uh, you know, for this retreat. So, and, and as I told you, there's so many things going on to our mind. So my first reaction was that, look, this is not going to happen. Uh, this retreat cannot happen because, uh, you know, I have so many other things to do. So the, I, I called up the organizers and, and told them that, look, uh, it's, it's a no-go. I cannot come. And the organizers, organizers were really, really heartbroken because they did not have a plan B. They did not have a plan B. All that they had was me. And if I did not go, the entire, entire, entire retreat, and the retreat was organized in a, in a resort near Mahabalipuram, uh, it would have been a washout, right? All that they had me was, was me and they did not have a plan. And they already put in so much money. They had booked the uh, place, they had paid for the pl uh, place, they had booked their uh, tickets and everything was arranged. And so they already invested and incurred a lot of expenses. They were heartbroken. But I, I, I couldn't help. I said, look, uh, you know, it, I, I can't help this because my priority is here and I needed to do this, uh, this, this planning, right? And that is where Leslie, um, you know, heard about this, and she simply asked me to change my decision. Uh, those of you who know, of course, where, know that when I when Leslie asked me to do something, I obey. I'm an obedient husband, right? Uh, <laughs> but jokes apart, jokes apart, jokes apart. This time, Leslie's argument was solid. She had a very, very solid argument as to why. I should change my mind. 
and I quote her, she said, a few days are not going to matter in the beginning of the treatment, even if we delay the treatment by just three days, three, four days that the, that the, you know, that the, the this thing should take place, it's not going to matter because, I repeat, what she said is, I know that the big C will, con will ultimately conquer the small C. The big C will conquer the small C. I'm sure all of you know that uh, the big she, she she referred to is Christ. That was a convincing argument. That was a convincing argument. And the bottom line is, I went. I went for the retreat. I did my sessions there. I broke down a few times during the sessions, but that's, uh, that's different. I finished my sessions. I came back and then we made the treatment plans, went through the whole cycle of surgery, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, and all the associated problems. And so the, the picture that you saw, the picture that you saw, right? This picture is from that time. This picture is from the chemotherapy time that we had. You, you know, thinking back, thinking back, I wonder, I'm going to repeat Leslie's statement, big C, the big C will conquer the small C. And she held on to that belief throughout the treatment period. Several people have told me that they never met such a cheerful cancer patient, several people. Actually, several of my friends used to pull my leg saying that I look more like a patient during that period than she did, you know. Uh, she, she actually went into the operation theater singing hymns, came out of the operation theater singing hymns. The doctor, the surgeon was amazed. And she said, look, I've never seen uh, a patient like this, right? And she endured the painful side effects of chemotherapy. Those of you who know about chemotherapy know how effect, how painful it could be. But what kept her going was a belief, strong belief, that the big C will conquer the small C. And today, five years after the treatment entered, we can con confidently say that the big C did indeed conquer the small C. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I think about this and ask myself, can we say the same thing about the current sea that is raging outside? The current sea that is raging outside called the coronavirus? Do we believe that indeed it is a small sea compared to Christ, compared to the big sea? Will Christ conquer coronavirus? And if so, why has he not done it yet? Why is this coronavirus still raging? Why, of all things, are believers being infected with it along with unbelievers? Why are this, why is this happening? Right? Why are even Christian doctors getting infected with the virus and even die? Some of you uh, know the recent incidences where uh, you know, a Christian doctor in Chennai who died of COVID because he was treating the COVID patients and uh, the, the troubles that, in, in, you know, that, that his family and the people have to go through because people didn't want his body to be buried, right? It was, it was the stigma associated with that is so much. So the question is, why is this happening and why is it happening to even Christians? Why does this happen, right? Uh, so the bottom line question could be, and that is what I will try to answer today briefly, is where is Christ in this situation? Where is Christ in this situation? We talked about cancer, we talked about corona. So where is Christ in this? And we talked about Leslie's belief of big C conquering the small C. Is that true for the coronavirus, which is the current small C that we are faced with? Now, we may not have answers to all the questions here, but we do have a definite affirmative answer to one question. One question, and the, the question could be, is Christ in control of the situation? And the answer is rhetorical, right? The answer is absolutely, 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 right? Because our God has sovereign authority over everything. 
sovereign authority over everything, right? I'm going to request Kalai to open her Bible and read from Job 42.2. Kalai, if you would please uh, unmute and uh, read Job 42.2. One more time, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Go yes. ahead. Job 42.2. I, yeah. I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be withstand. Uh, sorry, thwarted. Right. No purpose of yours can be withheld from you. And Job, you know, you, we, all of us know Job. He learned it the hard way. He learned it really, really the hard way. So when Job says something, thank you, Kalai, by the way, for reading, right? So when Job says something, we can believe him because he learned it the hard way. He didn't sit in, 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 in a library or in front of the computer and did his research and came up with his conclusion. He learned it the hardest way possible. And he says, Right? I know that you can do everything and no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Right? Okay. Manohar, uh, John Manohar, can you please read Ephesians 1, 11? Ephesians 1, 11. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, we can hear you. Ephesians 1, 11. In him, we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Yeah. What does it say? It doesn't say some things. It says in him, being, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of whose will, his will. It doesn't say some things. It says all things. And he says according to his will, not somebody else's will, right? All things according to his will, his will, right? So I think it is the question whether God is in control of coronavirus is a purely rhetorical question, right? I mean, we can quote, we can quote where Bible tells us that he governs, he governs the wind, he governs lightning, he governs snow, he governs the frogs, he governs the gnats, he governs the flies, he governs the locusts, he governs the quail, he governs the worms, he governs the fish, he governs sparrows, he, he governs grass, he is one who manages plants, he governs and rules over famine, the sun, the prison doors, blindness, deafness, paralysis, fever, every disease, travel plans, the hearts of kings and emperors and, and rulers, nations, murderers, spiritual deadness, donkeys, waves. We can, we can go on and on. We can go on and on. And for the interest of time, I'm not quoting biblical references for each of these, but when I post this in the, in the, in the blog, you will have biblical references. So you could go and check those biblical references. Each of these is with a biblical reference, right? So he, he, he governs all and all of them, all of them, all these I have listed and much more, much more do his sovereign will. So if we have established that, that God is, God is in control of the situation, the next question could be, what is God doing during this COVID-19 situation? What is God doing during this situation, right? And the simplest answer is this. The simplest answer that came to my mind is this. A million things that we do not know. A million things that we do not know. Neville, can you read Psalm 45? Psalm 40, verse 5. Psalm 40. Verse five, Neville? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can hear you, go ahead. Psalm 40, verse five. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare to you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Right. If we have to speak of them, there'll be too many to this. There is, there are a million things that he is doing. Really a million things that he is doing, right? His plans are too numerous for us to list. And he has performed many wonders for us. He is no equal. And we cannot, cannot just fathom to recite 
all his wonderful deeds, right? We will never come to an end if we, if we, if we start listing it, right? So, so he is doing a million things. He is doing a million things. Prashant, can you please read Romans 11, 33? Romans 11, 33. Give me one moment. Yeah, sure. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Take your time. Romans 11, 33. And while he is searching for it, others can also open your Bibles to that verse. Romans 11, 33. Yes. Uh, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Lovely, isn't it? How unsearchable are his judgments and how unfathomable are his ways. Ways. We cannot find it out. Right? So, so, so he, is, he is doing a million things that we do not know about. But that does not mean that he has not revealed his will to us. Even though some of his actions, some of his thoughts are mystery, he has revealed his will to us. He has revealed his will to us, right? When, 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 when Paul, Paul wrote Romans 11.33, it is not that he is asking us to close the Bible and, and, you know, and then go and try to understand ourselves. But what is, and, and, and remember, this comes after so many, so many chapters of talking about God's will and how can we understand God's will and things like that, right? So, so basically, he speaks to us today. We need to know that even though his ways are unfathomable, even though we may not really understand everything that he's doing, he has spoken to us and he has revealed his ways to us. And he speaks to us today through the word, through his scripture and his son, Jesus Christ. He speaks to us today through the word and his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Nivin, can you please read uh, Ephesians 1, 5 to 9? Nivin, Ephesians 1, 5 to 9, please. Ephesians 1, 5 to 9. Yeah. He, he predestined us for adoption as sons to Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he has lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. Yeah, right. What does is, what is, what is this end with? The verse 9 says, thank, thanks Nivin. The, the verse 9 says, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, right? Which he purposed in himself. And of course, he, he says he has made it known to us through Jesus Christ, his son, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, right? He has made known his will for us clearly, clearly through Jesus Christ, his son, right? Yeah, that's what he has done, okay? Right. Um, Nisha, can you please read Ephesians 3, 3, 3 to 4? Ephesians 3, 3 to 4. Yeah, Ephesians 3, 3 to 4. Yes. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of, of Christ. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? As I have briefly written already, by which when you read, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So what Paul is saying is like the mystery is there. It is revealed in Christ, through Christ Jesus. All that you've got to do is to read the word. And then you will understand his knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Right? So, God has revealed his will to us through Christ. So, right, so, 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 so having known that, having established that, we've established two things, that God is sovereign and his sovereignty does not, does not exclude the current coronavirus situation. And second, even though we do not know everything that God is doing, he has revealed to us his will through 
the Bible and through his son, Jesus Christ. So having established that, let us dig a little deeper into this answer to the question, what is God doing through the COVID-19 pandemic? Actually, I was blessed to come across a book, latest book written by John Piper. Several of you know who John Piper is, a prolific writer and, uh, you know, and, 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 and a great evangelist, right? So John Piper has written a, written a recent book, most recent book, he calls it as Coronavirus and Christ. And in this book, he actually lists down six paths, as we call it. He says there are six paths to follow to finding out the answer to this question. In the interest of time, I'm going to briefly look at just two of them, two of them. Lord willing, we can pick up the other four some other time, but right now we don't have too much time, so we will just stay with two of them, okay? The first answer, actually both the answers, might be a bit unpalatable for us, for many of us this morning. The unpalatable truth, the unpalatable truth, please pay me attention here. The unpalatable truth is the fact that God is painting a picture of the moral ugliness of sin through coronavirus and all similar calamities. Let me repeat this. The unpalatable truth is the fact that God is painting a picture of the moral ugliness of sin through coronavirus and all similar calamities. All of us know, if you go to Genesis and look at Genesis, <coughs> the creation story, we know that <coughs> we know that when God made, it was nice, it was great. And God said, everything that I have made is very good. But all, all of us also know that the fall changed that. Annie, if you're there, Annie, if you're there, could you please come closer to the, uh, the, 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 the laptop and read Romans 5.12, please? Romans 5.12. Are you there? Yes, I need to do that. Yeah, please. She doesn't have a glasses, so can her oh, do it? You can, you can stand in for her, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Romans 5? 12. 12. Please. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sinned. Yeah, right? Sin entered the world, and death came through sin, and death spread to all men, because all sinned. And we might as well add, continue sinning, isn't it? Mankind is continuing to sin in spite of all the messages, all that, that God has said to us, right? The world is broken with all its beauty and uh, you know, is intertwined with sickness and poverty and murders and calamities and accidents and deaths and, 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 and communal riots and whatnots, whatnots. Some of us are, might say, some of us might, might, might just say that, look, hey, but aren't these calamities and sicknesses from Satan? Isn't he the one who is actually doing it, right? Well, the answer is simply this. Satan is real. We know that Satan is real. We know that there is a spiritual warfare going on. We know that he is present here. We know that he controls several things in this, in this fallen world. And he likes our sufferings more, 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 more than anyone else. He loves to see us suffer so that we might curse God as he wanted Job to do, right? There's no doubt. There's no doubt that Satan is real. There's no doubt that Satan could cause, cause, cause problems. But, but remember this, Satan is on a leash. Satan is on a leash. He is not, he does not have unrestrained access to us. He does not have unrestrained access to spreading sicknesses and, 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 and calamities and stuff like that. It is God who decides to what extent, what, to, the, to what extent Satan can do damages. It's God who draws the boundary line. It is God who tells him that, look, you can't cross this much, right? So, 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 so basically, 
basically what I wanted to come down to this is very simple. It is God who, ha who is in control of this. And if he has allowed COVID-19 to happen, and he has allowed COVID-19 to happen because it is real in front of us, it is infecting us people, it is locking us down. So there is no doubt that it is impacting us. So if he is, and, 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 and if he has allowed to do this, he is sending us a message. And the message to me is simple. He is sending us a message. He is shouting out to humanity, wake up, wake up. This is what it will be like if you continue to sin against God. If you continue to sin against God, this is what it is. You cry out when physical illnesses hit you. You cry out when physical pain reaches you. You cry out when death stares you from near quarters, right? You cry out, but you remain insensitive when moral sin abounds. You remain insensitive when moral sin abounds. God says, it cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. You cannot continue to sin against me and, and, and still uh, you know, continue to want my grace. Right? So this is God's clarion call for us to turn away from our sinful lives and accept that salvation that is offered through Christ. So that's the, that's the answer that God wants us to remember this morning. COVID-19 is God's clarion call for us to remember that this is a picture of the moral, 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 moral problems, the moral abuse, the moral decay that we are going through. It's, it's, it's sort of a picture of what could happen if we continue to sin. So the Lord is telling us, stop sinning. Stop sinning and come back. Accept the salvation that is offered through Jesus Christ. But of course, we could ask an associated uncomfortable question could be, why are Christians being infected? Why are believers getting COVID-19? Right? Valid question. So for, for, for an answer to that, let me just take you back to the cancer story that I began this message with. I told you, told you that, that, that uh, you know, that, that, uh, uh, you know, Leslie and, and all of us know anyone who got cancer got to go through this, uh, you know, this, this um, um, uh, chemotherapy. And, you know, and this is what happens in chemotherapy. All of us who know chemotherapy knows that chemotherapy is nothing but a process by which chemicals are pumped into the system of the patient and the chemicals are meant to kill the malignant cells. Simple so far. However, the problem is that the chemicals that are pumped into the body, they cannot differentiate between the malignant cells and the good cells. How sad. It cannot differentiate. So what the chemicals in the, in the, in the, in the chemotherapy does is they go and kill every cell that grows and multiplies, that grows and multiplies. It's, it, 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 you know, it kills your hair growth, right? It kills the skin growth. It kills your taste buds, it kills your taste buds. It kills your white blood corpuscles that are required for your immunity and hence it kills your immunity. And that's really what happens when, when chemotherapy takes place. The chemicals cannot differentiate between the good cells that are required in the body and the bad cells that need to be killed. And that's really, that's really what is happening today. That's what is happening today. Sin is like cancer. It starts with just one cell. It just starts with one cell. And then it grows. It multiplies. It, then, then it spreads across your body. And the treatment is painful. Treatment is painful because the treatment can't differentiate between the good cell and the bad cell. So that is exactly why Christians are swept away in tsunamis. Christians are killed in terrorist attacks. Christians contract cancer. Christians can and will get coronavirus. Yes, we will. We will. If it is God's plan. Right? So, but, but just like the difference is that for us believers, it is not a punishment. It is a purification. It is a purification. Just like the chemotherapy purifies the body of malignant cells while killing several good cells, several good cells get killed, 
right? But the chemotherapy purifies the system of uh, you know malignant cells, the cancer-bearing cells. So we, but but the fact is that we as Christians, we as believers, also need to go through the suffering as others. Sarah, if you are there, Sarah, could you please read Romans eight twenty-three for us? Okay. Yeah. So Romans eight twenty-three, please. Yeah, one moment. Okay. Yeah. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. Even though we have the first fruits of the Spirit, we still grow and we are still eagerly waiting. Right? So it is not a punishment for us, but we have to go through that along with others because it's a purification process that is going on and any purification process is painful, is painful, right? For believers, it is also not the wrath of God. I want us to understand that too. It is also not the wrath of God, right? Um, Sanjana, please, if you, if you can, please read 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 to 10, Sanjana. One Thessalonians five nine to ten. One minute, madam. I'm just taking. Yeah, sure. We can hear you, so take your time. One Thessalonians five nine to ten. Others can search and take out this uh, passage as we wait for Shirley to start. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjana. What does it say? It says, God did not appoint us for wrath, but to obtain salvation. Those of us who have already accepted Jesus Christ, we do not have condemnation. We do not have to worry about wrath of God, but we can look forward to salvation through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ died for us. And then the, the second, the other part is beautiful too. It says, whether we, we wake or sleep, we live together with him. Right? It's not a condemnation, but a confirmation that whether we contract coronavirus or not, or if I take it a little bit farther, whether we die or live, that's what really the wake or sleep says, whether you're alive or dead, you live together with Christ. The big C, the big C, right? The big C. So that, that, that brings me into the second answer to the question. We, we already answered one question that is that is uh, you know that that what 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 is god doing during covid-19 and god is asking us wake up stop sinning return to me what's the second answer we'll just stop with this in, in the interest of time but the second answer is this the second answer is that god is calling us to repent and accept the grace that has been given to us through jesus christ God is calling us to repent and accept the grace that has been given to us through Jesus Christ. Pastor Albert, uh, could you please read us, uh, you know, the, 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 the incident in, Jew, in Luke 13, 1 to 5? Luke 13, 1 to 5, uh, you know, there's a dialogue. There's a dialogue that happens like this. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? 
No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So what's happening here is that people are asking Jesus why some people are murdered. Because uh, Pilate had, that is exactly what Pilate had done. He had murdered some Galileans and, you know, and, and then mixed, his, uh, mixed their blood with the, with, with the sacrifices and things like that. And so he's asking why some people are murdered. And Jesus' answer was as actually very revealing. Jesus is, you know, is not answering the question directly. Jesus says that, look, and of course there is this, uh, you know, some people are murdered and then some people are killed like in, through natural disasters, like uh, you know, the tower falling on them in Silo, Siloam, right? So Jesus' response is classic. He is asking them not to compare themselves and see who is a lesser sinner? Who is a lesser sinner? That's typically what people try to do, right? People try to do that, look, I am, I am, I am not as bad a sinner as somebody else is and things like that. So he is asking them, do not compare and see who is a lesser sinner than those who suffered and died. Some people suffered and died. It might be a man-made disaster like the murder committed by Pilate, or it could be a natural disaster that was done by the tower falling down on them, but immaterial of how these people suffered and died, do not compare do not compare and say and try to find out who is a lesser sinner. He clarifies that all of us deserve, I repeat, all of us deserve the same fate. And so he actually asks, he is asking them to redirect this question and, and ask instead, not, do not ask why did they die, but ask why am I spared? You get the point? Jesus is saying, do not worry about those who are dead and suffer, yes, ask. How come I am spared? How come I who deserve the same fate, how come I am spared? Jesus' answer is clarifying to the people that it's only by grace that they are alive and not because they were any lesser sinners than those who suffered and died. So in the current context, Jesus is asking us not to go ahead and analyze people who have got coronavirus, people who contracted coronavirus, immaterial of what community they're coming from, or immaterial of whether they are believers or unbelievers, or whatever it is, Jesus is asking us, do not try to analyze the people who got coronavirus and see and so the why they got it, but, but if we are spared, if we are spared, know that it is only by his grace. And it is time for us to repent and ask forgiveness and seek that grace from him through Jesus Christ. And that's really uh, the, you know, what Jesus is asking us to do in this, this day. So the concluding message is this. We have an option. We have an option of working out the odds. We can, we, we can calculate the probability whether I will contract corona or not, right? We can calculate uh, the probability based on where we live, whether we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a in a red zone or in a containment zone or in a, in, a, in a green zone, or we can calculate based on our age, general health, and, and, you know, and all that stuff, right? Uh, our other illnesses that we already have, whether I have sugar or, you know, or, or you know, blood pressure and things like that, or heart ailment. So you know, we can always calculate the probability of us contracting corona. That's one choice, right? And of course, we will maintain the social distancing. We will take all precautions. We will maintain the highest levels of, 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 of um, uh, you know, personal hygiene. We will take, make sure that all preventive measures are taken. We will disinfect ourselves and our homes and all the things that we use. So I'm not saying we should not do that. We should continue to do that. But let us not get to the extent of making coronavirus into a, something that happens by odds or by probability. That's one choice. The, uh, the, the, the choice that Jesus wants us to make this morning is, is, is to trust in Jesus Christ, the rock. Trust in the big C. Trust in the big C. Trust in the rock. Put our, our trust in the rock, in the big C, who already told us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 to 10, for God did not appoint us to walk, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, and whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Jesus Christ tells us that, that whether we wake or sleep, 
whether we are dead or alive, we can live together with him. We can live together with him. We can live together with him. Cancer or corona, Christ is the answer. Cancer or corona, Christ is the answer. The three C's of today, cancer or corona, Christ is the answer. Because whether we live or die, whether we contract coronavirus or not, we can live together with him if we stop sinning, if we repent, and if we are willing to accept that the life that we have, the health that we have, the immunity that we have, the protection that we have is all by grace and not because of something that we have done or we have, we have, we, 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 we have, we have achieved ourselves. So I think, I think it was, it was not, it was, it was, it was, it was not coincidence that, that, uh, you know, that Nisha read out that, uh, that passage from Joel 2. Nisha, can I request you to please read that out again once more? The passage that you read at the beginning of your announcement? Sure. From Joel chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Turn to me. Turn to your hearts to me. That's the call. That's the call. It's a clarion call. It's a clarion call. And, um, and, and we, have, we have the grace that is offered through Jesus Christ to come and, you know. So unless we do that, unless we do that, everything else that we do, the, 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 the mask that we wear, the, the, the sanitization that we do, the hands that we wash every 20, you know, for, for 20 seconds every hour, or, or, or you know, the so, social um, you know, distancing that we maintain and things like that, all that will be cosmetic, cosmetic changes unless we look into our hearts and, 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 and know that we are sinners and we have continued to sin. It's time for us to stop. It's time for us to go to him. It's time for us to repent and time for us to accept that it is by his grace that we are able to do this. So we are able to do this, right? Paul, um, you know, Paul in, uh, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 1, 8 to 9, please turn your Bibles to that, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 to 9, I will read it out for you. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired for life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Yes, we despair. We know that death is close to us. We know that Corona is close to us. We know that cancer is still around us. We know that we could suffer and it could be a desperation for us, but all that is to make us rely not on ourselves, not on what we do, not on our strengths, but on God who has raised the dead, who raised Jesus from the dead, but Christ from the dead, and who will raise us also. Afflictions are to make us rely not on ourselves. Big C, the big C, the big C will conquer the small C. Cancer or Corona, Christ is the answer.